What in the world is a host bus adapter and how do you use one? Hey S'mores, I'm Shannon Morse, welcome to Morse Code. I do tech reviews and tutorials, so if you are looking for in-depth tech and gadget content, you have come to the right place. Today, we are getting geeky with host adapters. If you have been watching my videos on the Hack5 channel, you can consider these videos to kind of be like hack tips, but with a new Morse Code twist. I'm doing a three-part series to explain what host adapters are, the theory behind them, and how you can actually use them for all sorts of different scenarios. These are extremely extremely useful for hardware hacking and for developers, but getting introduced to them can be a bit convoluted, so I'm hoping to clear up some of that information. Luckily though, I have partnered up with Binyo to bring you this series and to share some tutorials, so I hope that by the end of these videos you will know exactly how to use a host adapter and what you can actually do with them. So before I get started, I did want to thank Binyo for sponsoring this series. Working with hardware is hard enough as it is. Engineers and hackers spend hours fumbling around with cumbersome and outdated adapters, recreating the wheel to get everything to talk to each other. Well, the Nova USB host adapter from Binyo changes all of that. With a single slim device, you can interact with I2E, Spy, UART, which is one of my favorites and I've used plenty of times, OneWire, and SWI protocols. The Nova host adapter works where you work. You can simply open up a COM port on your favorite terminal application, or even automate control with Python. Binyo has accessory boards for ecosystems like Feather and Stemma QT by Adafruit, Quick by SparkFun, and Microbus by MicroE. And you don't have to be technical either. Binyo has this intuitive desktop software that is supported on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It's even been featured in the Amp Hour, the Embedded Muse, and Hackster. So if you are an engineer, a hobbyist, or a student, working with hardware just got a lot easier. Learn more by visiting binho.io, that's B-I-N-H-O dot I-O, and I would like to thank Binho for sponsoring this video. So let's talk about host adapters. So host adapters, which are commonly called host bus adapters as well, are these little hardware devices that don't usually look this pretty that plug into a computer and then plug into other devices. It's kind of like a little man in the middle, but a nice man in the middle, not like the ones that you get from a Wi-Fi pineapple, that lets your computer talk to other devices that might not have your generic consumer ports on them, like USB, for example, and you have to use specific interfaces for communication. While you do have your motherboard inside your computer and that has a bunch of integrated circuits soldered onto it that let it talk to other devices like your graphics card, for example, all of your hard disk drives and your solid state drives, all of those are really friendly with the motherboard. But other devices don't have readily available circuitry available and already installed on a computer motherboard to allow you to use them. So when it comes to these kind of devices, things like sensors or actuators, things that you will mess around with if you are doing some kind of mod or some kind of hardware hack, you need an extra piece of hardware to let those products talk to your computer. And in this case, a host adapter fixes that problem. The host adapter kind of ends up being like a translator for the two computer languages so that they can be friendly with each other and actually make friends and have coffee together. Most consumers never run into this problem since consumer devices use standard protocols like USB to automatically work with their laptop or their PCs, basically already making them plug and play. But whenever you're a maker, a hacker, a DIYer, maybe you are trying to debug or fix a device, you're a programmer or a developer, the list goes on, you need your computer to be able to communicate with a lot of other interfaces. That includes ones like SPI or SPI, which stands for Serial Peripheral Interface, or I2E, which stands for the Inter-Integrated Circuit. There's also OneWire in SWI, which is the Single Wire Interface. Plugging in a host adapter between the two devices lets your PC send and receive data and be able to send commands back and forth. So for example, the host adapter can allow an engineer to build a prototype and test any code before making a bunch of custom hardware. They could test custom hardware before shipping final products. And a 
can also be used to install special data on devices like a serial number or provisioning data like security encryption keys before they are actually shipped from the manufacturer. So to show you a host adapter in action, I've got the one from Binyo called the Nova here to plug in and test. And since it uses the standard USB communications device class drive to work, it's compatible already with most operating systems right out of the box. And it's very, very easy to use. There's no drivers that you need to install. It should just automatically be recognized by your computer. So since I use Windows 10 almost every single day because I have to edit and I have to use Adobe Suite and I have to use Photoshop and none of that stuff is available on Linux in a very compatible way. I'm just gonna show you this example on my Windows 10 box. So don't judge me too hard, my Linux friends. I still have a Linux box. It's my laptop, it's an XPS 13, and it's great. So on my Windows 10 box, I just plugged the Nova into my USB port and it enumerates as USB serial device COM4 under ports. Whenever I pull up device manager, you can see it there. If you unplug it, then that one will become a shaded gray color. And that's basically how I can tell if it's COM4 or not. So it comes with a little device called a test circuit that can be plugged into the IDC connector, which contains five different signal pins Pins. There's one 3V3 power signal and one V bus signal, and then there's also three ground. So I will plug this into the connector and then simply download the GUI straight off of the Binyo website, and that's called Binyo Mission Control. And if you don't want to deal with a GUI, you can also just jump right into Python if you know Python, or you can use CoolTerm instead. So Mission Control is set up as an executable on Windows, which can simply be run once installed. If Windows Smart Screen blocks you from opening the execution, executable that happened to me, you can bypass that by clicking more info and then run anyway. When it comes to developer software, this problem happens a lot. It automatically thinks that it's malicious. It's not necessarily malicious, it just does not recognize the program. So once the Nova's serial connection with the computer is established, you will notice that the LED turns blue, originally it was a yellowish color, and then it lets you know that it's ready. You can then just identify your Nova at the top of the GUI and click connect. So mine had a firmware update, so I had to refresh and then click connect again, and then it was ready to go. So the device mode can be seen at the bottom of the window and it's defaulted to IO and all five pins can be used for pretty much anything underneath that IO tab. You can also activate SPY or I squared C modes and any pins that have not been set will still be available under that IO tab. One of the really easy ways that you can tell if yours is connected and receiving signals is by just changing the LED color. So of course, because it's my favorite color, I changed mine to purple. There is RGB on the GUI so you can just slide the scale to whichever color you want. <laughs> so yes, Binyo is a sponsor, but I also wanted to mention why I like this device so much and why I'm using it as an example. It's basically because Binyo is taking the same approach to their electronics that Hack5 takes to ours. You make it friendly enough that it's not convoluted and it's approachable so that anybody can experience the joy that is learning how you can really delve into technology. It feels welcoming, it feels approachable, and it shines a light on how tough it is to usually break into these kind of concepts. Hopefully this little series that I'm doing will help more folks understand hardware development and testing. Testing. So that's the basics about using a host adapter and what you can do with it. Later on in the series, I will show you what it's like to connect a little breakout board and how you can send commands and receive responses and a little bit more about the technology behind it. So if you are new here, subscribe to become a part of this community. Check out my Patreon and buy me a coffee links down below to see how you can support this channel. And comment below and let me know if you have ever used a host adapter and what kind of video tutorials you would like me to share. Thank you so much again to my s'mores for subscribing and watching. I'm Shannon Morris and I will see y'all soon. Bye y'all.